Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today we have an update on our G80 M3. We've had the car for around 1500 miles now and we've only done an initial drive video which was on the BMW UK press day. So now that we've done more mileage and live with the car, it's time to update you on what we think of the car as it stands. I'm gonna do a short driving video, give you my thoughts and then I'm gonna get Bilal in the car and we're gonna have a quick chat about this car. We do have our F80 M3 here and I know a lot of you guys are asking us for a direct comparison between the two. I will touch on that on this video but we will have a dedicated video of this car versus a more stock F80 M3 very soon. This one is very modified, so not fair to compare the two, but we will get that video up in the next couple of weeks. So I'll start with the interior because that is one of the biggest upgrades from the F80. In this video, I'm not going to compare too much against the F80 because we are going to have a dedicated video of the G80 versus the F80 in around a week or so. But I will start off by saying this interior is much closer to the fit and finish of the F90 M5 than the F80 was to the F10. It comes with full leather, it's very well put together. There's hardly any creaks or rattles, which you would expect from a new car. But even in our F80, there was creaks in the car around for sort of three, 4,000 miles. Uh, I really like the paddles. Um, the competition comes with the carbon paddles with the red inserts on the plus and minus. The carbon really lifts the interior, especially the center console over here. That makes such a huge difference to the car along with the full leather. It really lifts the interior and this also has the ambient lighting that the F90 has, but it's not quite as good as the F90. They're slightly scrimped on that, but then this is the sort of cheaper, younger brother so I guess they don't want to make it completely like that car but I think in terms of M3 versus M5 if I go through the generations this is the closest an M3 has been to an M5 in terms of luxury and I know that might sound a little bit strange because an M3 is more about driving performance but times are changing and I think this car has a driving performance which I will come to but it also has a very nice interior so it's luxurious at the same time I think it'll make that decision between M3 and M5 a little bit difficult because realistically for me this is more nimble than the M5 but the M5 is more comfortable so and it's got more space so I think that's what the decision is going to come down to now rather than purely being the M5 is more luxurious and has a better interior because this is right up there now i'm going to head out some open roads now so i can drive the car and give an updated impression of my driving because the only one i've done so far is the media day which i mentioned previously if you haven't seen that video i'll link up there but that was literally just a day trying to get as many shots as we could and around a couple of hours in the car we've now combined on around 1200 miles or 13 no actually 1500 miles in this car so we've got a much better idea of what the car is like to live with. We're at one of our favorite stretches of roads that you may have seen on our videos before, so I'm slightly familiar with it. And my initial impressions of the car really haven't changed. I've just got more comfortable with it. And if you watch my initial video, I did say I felt at home in the car straight away and I've just gelled with it even more. It's instantly familiar. The controls are where you want them. The ride is absolutely amazing. I mean, I'm in sport now. The road is bumpy and it's still cruising over them. This road is extremely bumpy. Uh, if you watch our GP3 video, you'll see it jiggling all over the place. And although it might appear I'm moving up and down a lot, it's nothing compared to what some of the other cars will do. The steering is very, very precise you can really place the car wherever you want it. it just goes it's very little understeer that's probably helped by the fact that it's got 275 tires on the front it's got bags of grip which is going to be down to the michelin ps4s and i'm glad the car did not come with pirellis the brakes are very progressive and 
And from inside, the car sounds pretty good. I know a lot of that's kind of fake pumped in, but even from outside the car, considering the car has a cat and an OPF, it doesn't sound too bad. I think they've done a really, really good job of this car. It feels like it rides like an F90 M5, but it handles more like an M2. So they've bridged that gap amazingly well. I'm not sure how they've done it, but it feels almost as nimble as an M2. The weight has increased of the car, but honestly on these roads, you don't feel it. Maybe on a track you will, but on a country lane, pushing it to kind of safe limits, it's not a problem at all. So the settings I've got on here are my favorite settings. Obviously you can program them on the M1 and M2 button. Um, and as I said, you can even drive these roads in sport on the dampers and it's fine. Comfort just makes it a little bit softer. I haven't had a chance to play around with the 10 stage traction control yet because I don't really want to do that on the road. I need to get the car either on a track or on an airfield to have a play around with that. But the chassis is very balanced, very adjustable. You can have a lot of fun with it. In MDM mode, it allows you quite a bit of slip before it intervenes. So you can get the back end out, even if you're not that confident driving a rear wheel drive car. And if you want to drive it sedately, you can. You just cruise along in it and it's very comfortable. I'm going to go pick Bilal up now because he has been commuting in the car and he's done quite a bit of the mileage on it so he can give us a different perspective. And also we did ask you on our YouTube channel to fire us some questions that you want answered about the car. So we'll actually go through those. And if I haven't covered them so far, one of us will ask the questions and we'll answer them together so you get a really good perspective. One of the things that people have mentioned, which I'll just talk about now while I'm cruising back, is what the gearbox is like. Now for us, that transition wasn't that big because we had the F90 M5 since 2018 and it has the same ZF eight-speed gearbox. And honestly, I didn't really miss the DCT in that car because a big comfortable car like that doesn't need a DCT. The ZF gearbox is actually very, very good. The shifts are fast, it's smoother. The DCT feels a little bit more mechanical in the F80 and the shifts, you actually feel them in this, they're a lot smoother. So I guess in that way, it's slightly less engaging, but maybe I'm getting old. I don't miss the DCT that much. The ZF is very good. The shifts are very fast. Downshifts are very smooth. I don't really have any complaints about it. I guess for people who are purists, you can go for manual if you want, but obviously with a four wheel drive system, BMW have not designed a dual clutch gearbox to work with this setup. So that's why everything has the ZF, but a lot of it's going to be software based now um, with this gearbox. So they'll be able to make it behave how they want it to. So I'm going to head back now. We'll pick Bilal up and then we'll go through some of your questions and get his input on the car as well. So I've picked up Bilal, we're going to go for a drive now and discuss his feedback of the car. Mm -hmm. So let's get going. Let's go. So if people don't know, you obviously are an M guy as well. So do you yeah. want to talk through your M car history? My history? Yeah. So my first M car, actually that was my first BMW, was an M car. So it was uh, the E36 M3 Evo. Um, but the first one was a convertible. You bought a convertible? I bought a convertible. Well, well, yeah. What were you thinking? I don't know. I mean, it looked amazing. <laughs> it was Cosmo, Cosmo Black, was it? Yeah. Is that the one? Cosmos, yeah, I think. Cosmos. Yeah. Cosmos Black with, a, I think, a grey leather interior. Um, but, yeah, I was really hyped by it. Um, but as soon as I bought it and drove it around for a, for a week or so, I just thought, mm, this is felt really heavy and just squeaking and just... It wasn't nice, but anyway, that was my first one. And then I bought um, my second one was another E36 M3 Evo, coupe this time, in uh, Avis Blue. And then my third one, what was my third one? It was, it was a Z3M coupe. The black, black one? Black Z3M coupe. You copied me? Uh, no, I didn't copy you. You saw my, <laughs> I want it. Beautiful car. I think that's one of my favorite M cars ever that I've owned. Um, then I had an E46 M3, and then I had another E36 M3. So I've had quite a few of them actually. And oh yeah, then I had E39 M5. So and I've still got that E39 M5. 
until we started our business and then since then we've got others so that's my MCAR history in brief really and what have you thought about this one so far what's oh, your initial this. thoughts I love this one I mean comparing it to the F80 it's leaps and bounds ahead I think um, in terms of build quality the way it drives um, I've driven this a few times I've taken it home I've done the school run a couple of times and taken it for a spirit to drive and it's it's like they've achieved the best of both worlds I think so when you're cruising around it feels like a what's the best way of describing it like a mini F90 I think M5 it's really comfortable it's solid it feels really good in terms of boot quality and then put your foot down run some bends and it's very very agile so it's a fantastic car in the short time I've had it so far so a lot of people are going to ask us about the looks of the car so let's discuss that and get that out of the way okay have you had your say on this or shall I start I haven't had my say on it so we're going to discuss it live <laughs> now well I think both of us were the same when we saw the initial photos of the car um, we both were aghast I think is the word <laughs> by the front grills and the, the peculiar sort of shapes and contours around the rest of the car but then we saw the car in person at BMW on the on the launch in the pickup and I have to say as soon as I saw it in person in this color especially I just I don't know that that feeling of repulsiveness just went out the window I think and I started to get used to it and now I look at the car and I'm really warming to it. I'm just, it's not as, oh my God. It's not as repulsive, no. but that's the important part, you see, because I found it absolutely disgusting in the, the pictures leading up to it. And I was like, what the hell are they doing? But I don't think the front grille is what's the only thing that's wrong with this car. Yeah. The lines are all over the place, but it does make it look really aggressive and it doesn't look like a normal three series. And I think that's what they've tried to do, but they've just gone really far with it like the crease lines on the doors and, the, and they don't really flow and F80 design wise flows like amazingly yeah. well it's like the Huracan and the F80 they're both designed really well in terms of their cohesiveness what, let the policeman go but this one just seems to be like it's designed by three different people yeah, it's like the front the middle and the back are designed by three different people and they've put it together but I will say that the front grills are very color sensitive on some cars it looks really big and on others it doesn't, but it's one of those things that you look at and you do get used to. Um, yeah. It's just, it does grow on you. But I will say this, from my perspective, I don't think it's a beautiful car. But for me, I will buy a car based on how it drives and not how it looks, because I'm not about showing off going down the road, driving something that someone else likes to look of. I want it, it to make me feel a certain way when I drive it. So maybe I'm alone in that, I'm not sure. No, I, I get what you're saying. I mean, same here. I mean, the way this car drives and feels and the build quality of the car inside, especially, um, it's just incredible. But for me, I think the way the car drives and makes you feel, that is making me warm to the exterior more, if you know what I mean. It's like making me think, as a whole package, I'm starting to look at it and think, okay, that's a capable car. I'm, it's It's just... It's, it's like being served a dish that doesn't look good, but it tastes amazing. Yeah, then, then, <laughs> basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? And then you look at it, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad after all, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, yeah, it's very colour sensitive. Um, the M3, I think, looks better than the M4. It's much more aggressive, has that wider stance. Yeah. Um, but then it also has those weird kind of contours around the rear wheel arch uh, to the door, you know that? Yeah, where, the, where it goes really flat. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah it is peculiar but it definitely stands out in terms of um three series you know you can't look at another three series and yeah and mistake, mistake it, it and you can't make a normal three series look like this where yeah. that was a big problem with the e36 um it looks so similar to the normal one you could just put the parts on it it looked like an m3 the other thing i wanted to mention quickly the interior is as we've mentioned amazing step up from the previous generation it's very close to the m5 but you know i test drove the one with the seats at the BMW press launch and we didn't we couldn't wait for our one to come with the seats so we've got the normal ones but these are actually really good they're really good they're really comfortable like they're actually really comfortable and they do hold you in yeah. really well I was very kind of disappointed that we didn't have those seats initially but I'm I'm okay with these ones they're actually very very good Look, don't get me wrong I prefer the carbon ones and I think in the next one we will wait for them 
but these are very practical i think the carbon ones are not going to be very practical if you're using the car all the time because because their sides are so high you're going to almost have to swing over them yeah, yeah. and i reckon that that's going to wear over time but that's not going to stop me from getting them but guys what i will say is that don't be disappointed if you can't stretch to those seats or you don't get them i don't think you'll be disappointed with these ones in terms of the way they function yeah there's lots of adjustments you can make on these seats you can bring the bolsters in out the the rear um the lumbar support so there's quite a lot of that which you can change so they are very good seats i think i went the wrong way am i supposed to go up there yeah you can go straight over go straight. <laughs> but the other thing with the power on this car it is fast i've timed the uh, 60 to 130 and 100 to 200 and i've done it flat eight seconds almost uh 100 to 200 which is really quick considering a standard f80 is doing it in like 9.5 or something so what does that compare to in terms of like a modified f which which stage would that be in terms of a uh, stage ones are doing like 7.4 7.5 so it's a half a second off a, a tuned okay f80 but obviously this has got the extra weight but it's for a standard car it's fast it's got a lot of torque when you come out of corners you put your foot down it just goes and the, i've mentioned this in my driving segment just before but the grip is amazing oh yeah that's incredible for a rear wheel drive car the grip is sensational in this car yeah so what i'm going to do now is we've had a lot of uh, questions on youtube mm -hmm. so i'm going to basically go through those and then we can answer them and see if there's something we haven't covered so we hit dan the, 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 the nice roads cause... yeah you can just keep going drive where you want to drive so dan here says are you still planning on designing a new front grille we've designed we it have. <laughs> we've designed it but i think I, it's safe to say that looking at tooling costs and everything and the way people have warmed to this and the way we've warmed to it yeah. we're not going to spend a huge amount of money on tooling a plastic front bumper to make the cost reasonable because we don't believe there's a huge market for it what we will do is we'll probably still go ahead with the project and make it in carbon fiber mm -hmm. so it will be expensive but it's going to be for those people who just want to make the car different I did say right from the beginning that we're not trying to fix it because it's not broken it's just a personal taste thing and I think we'll still offer it but it will be in a completely different material than what we thought we would offer it in in the first place yeah agreed um, it doesn't really make sense to spend hundreds of thousands of money in terms of tooling for a plastic part which probably we're not going to get that much traction of so yeah, and when I say hundreds of thousands, I'm talking about between 300 and 500,000 pounds we would have to spend yeah. on the tooling. tooling. And we both know that we could put that money somewhere else and yeah. make much more money out of a project. So that's not going to go ahead. But we do have the rear diffuser designed already. We have the rear spoiler designed. That's still going to come out. And as will the front bumper, but it's all going to be carbon fiber. So the next question is, how is the ZF box compared to the DCT just when you're normal driving? Um, I haven't found any issues there at all. Um, it's been really good. But Smooth. normal driving, I would say it's better than DCT. If, if somebody is talking about uh, I'm looking for that. driving on a, on a daily basis, uh, the, the ZF is actually much smoother, it's more comfortable. You don't realize it's there when you're just driving along and it's like in its lowest uh, shift mode. So, and when you're on it, I don't really notice a huge amount of difference. No. I don't miss, honestly, I don't miss the DCT. Definitely. And one thing I want to mention as well is, like, we're not getting paid by BMW to do any stuff. We don't get free cars. We pay for the cars ourselves. All the BMWs you own, we pay for them. So, like, we're not giving any biased opinions here. I just want to make that clear. Do you want to confirm that? Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> this is straight out of our bank accounts. <laughs> but, you know... We're not in partial to any discounts, BMW. <laughs> <laughs> One second. Okay, so is there enough of a difference between the M3 and M5 now? I'll take that one because I've probably driven yeah, the M5 more. Yeah, you've driven the M5 more, more than me. The new, and I would say, yes, there is still a difference. The M5 is bigger, more comfortable. This is almost as comfortable. It has slightly less space, but it's much more agile. So I think for me, having an F90 M5, and then having something like an M2 would be like the perfect two guard carriage. But if you can only afford one car or you can only have one car, this would be the one car to kind of do it all. Yeah. It's, it sits really well in the middle of both of those and does both of those jobs extremely, extremely well. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I've taken it to, like I said, I've, I've done the school run with it. I've done motorway driving with it. And it's been so nice to drive. And then you know as well, 
you can plant plant your foot and you'll get that response and agility as well. So it's, it's a very good all-around car. Okay, so Claudio AGMF Hyo says, awesome, been waiting for stage two video. Um, what I would say on the tuning on this, guys, is the ECUs are locked on this car. We don't know when they're going to be unlocked. So for now, tuning is not really in the forefront of our minds. We just want to get the even cheery intake done. We want to get the aero done and some suspension. And that's going to be it for a little while, probably until we get the four wheel drive one. And that brings us on to some other questions. People asking about uh, two wheel drive versus four wheel drive. Two wheel drive in the dry is absolutely amazing. Yeah. You don't need the four wheel drive. But I haven't driven it in the wet yet. Have you driven it in no, the wet? No, I haven't yet? driven it in the wet either. So I can't really answer that. Like normally, like it rains here all the time, but it's been quite sunny recently. So I can't answer that yet. But this car does have a huge amount of grip compared to the previous generation. Uh, someone says, is it worth 80K out of the box? Yes, I would say so. I think it is. I think the just the build quality inside is such a massive step up from the F80. Um, the fact that it's an all-round car, you can drive it comfortably, you can drive it, you know, full chat. The response you get from it, the grip, the, the car is stunning. It's, it's a really well-made car, really well put together. So for me, that's a yes. Okay, so uh, Cal here says, is it family friendly? Is your partner comfortable driving it? Any decent security devices as standard? I would say yes, it is family friendly. Um, my partner hasn't driven it yet, but I don't think she would have any problem driving this car. It's very easy to drive. Yeah. You can kind of feel where the corners of the car are. It's got lots of driving aids like the parking sensors and cameras. So I don't think there'd be any issues with that. In terms of security devices, since the F90 came out, it, they don't have the same problems the other ones did with the whole uh, key transponder thing. Oh, yeah. So these keys actually stop. As far as I'm aware, someone correct me if I'm wrong, they stop transmitting the signal when they haven't moved for like a couple of seconds okay, so, they so, can't scan it, so they can't scan it that's why you, you, we haven't seen anyone stealing um, F90s and G series cars but F series cars get stolen all the time okay should I go straight Carol? yeah you can keep going straight uh, so the next one we say is from Scott Bagley would you say it's better all-round car than the M5 it's kind of like they've got the driving position spot on can only imagine what the CSL will be like It does a job really well, doesn't it? I mean, what's the, the, between this and the M5, this is more agile. It's probably easier to drive. It's a bit smaller, so maybe a bit more practical if you're doing, you know, town driving or whatever, you know, for that parking space you want. So maybe this, I would say, probably a bit more practical as a town car than the M5. Okay, so we've got a question from Ches Lynn Owens. Hi guys, car looks amazing, very aggressive. You guys nailed the color, best color for the new M3. Will you guys do a full super sprint exhaust on the new car? Thanks for a great channel. Um, yeah, the colours colour was a fluke. <laughs> we, we didn't order this colour. We ordered the green one, didn't we? We ordered Isle of Man green yeah. with colour yami orange uh, interior, interior two-tone with the carbon buckets. Uh, the order was delayed uh, by a long time. We can't wait to do that because we need to develop parts and make money out of the car. So they said uh, we've got this in stock and we took it. Yeah, take a right. Um, but you know what? What do you think of the colour? Because uh, I think I've got the same view as you. We lucked out on the colour. Complete fluke. And the moment we saw it, I was like, wow, that is stunning. It's so dynamic. Um, in different lights, it changes shades so much. It's got that sort of sheen of gold to it. It's just, an, it's a beautiful colour. I love it. Yeah, and since we've had it detailed as well, it's really popped out the gold flake. Yeah. In the car, the guys at Aspect did a really good job uh, with detailing it in the ceramic coat. And now, the, like at night, it looks like a different color. In the sun, it looks like a different color. You can even have the car half in the shade, half in the light. And the, both ends of the car look like they're, yeah, yeah. they're different colors. It's really dynamic. And do you know we're planning on getting like a four-wheel drive M4 later on and a Touring. And I'm really tempted to get the Touring in this color because I think in the Touring, it looked really oh, yeah, classy. Yeah. I don't yeah. think that... Like, uh, I like bright colours, but I don't think this car quite works with bright colours. So next question from Ricard, Richard Pardo. Clearly the performance disguises this weight, but is it worthy of carrying the M3 badge? Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, 100%. This thing around corners is, is, is special. And this is stock. We haven't done anything to it. And it's so capable. It gives you so much confidence. <coughs> definitely. Definitely. Oh, sorry. The other guy asked about Super Sprint exhaust. But, 
we would have taken the car already to Super Sprint because they were our good friends and we love developing exhaust with them. But because of COVID restrictions, we just can't go there at the moment. So mm. maybe on the next model we'll do it. But if COVID restrictions reduce, maybe we can do that because it always makes great content as well. But I will say stock, the sound is actually pretty good. Considering it's CAT and OPF, I don't know how they've done it, but it's not bad. No, I agree. Okay, so... Um, the next question is... For the road, do you think the extra pound weight is the right formula for an M3? Does it feel too big for an M3 now? It doesn't feel big at all. It doesn't feel big. The, the, the chassis dynamics, it disguises how heavy this car is and it doesn't feel big at all. It's very responsive, it's very agile. It, it almost feels like an M2. That's exactly what I said in my driving segment and it I have not even like discussed this with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's my feeling of this car. Yeah, it almost yeah. feels like an M2. That's it's how agile good, like yeah, an M2. Definitely. So it's closer in size to an M5, but in agility it's closer to the yeah. M2. So they've literally just made that gap so small. It's amazing how they've done it. Yeah. And at the same time, if you're not flooring it and you're just cruising around, it feels like an M5. Yeah. So while I've got you here, how far have you got with the intake design? So the intake design in this is more involved than it was with the F80 because on the F80, we went from the turbo inlet. So I didn't go all the way to the turbos. The turbos had their own inlets, which, which came up and we went from there onwards. On this one, you can see the turbos. And so we're going straight from the turbos themselves all the way. So it's more involved. It's a bit more technical, a bit more things to do, and, and I'm having to use all my experience, <laughs> everything I've learned through the years, and all different materials in terms of manufacturing to, to make this intake. This isn't just going to be carbon and silicon. This is going to be carbon, silicon, probably some 3D printed parts, some machine parts, and some custom flexible parts as well, because, yeah, there, there's a lot going on in this. So um, it sounds like a really in-depth design job that's going to take a little while so it's if you want timelines for those when, when do you think the first prototype will be ready so i'm hoping to have the first 3d printed prototype two weeks give me two weeks two weeks yeah. okay but yeah if you guys are interested in the intake design alone we are making a separate series on that so just keep subscribed to the channel and watch out for the updates but i think that's pretty much it did you want to add anything that we you think we might have missed out the only thing actually while we're on the subject is you've never had a car with a heating steering wheel and you've realized oh, yeah. there's a revelation. Hell yeah. Oh my days. I mean, now it's warming up, but the heating steering wheel is a, a must. must. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to live without this now. Does your Tesla have a heating steering no. wheel? No. Is it even an option? It is now. It is now. They're, okay. they're introduced it now in the Model 3s, but wow, I mean, now I jump into this in the evenings, press that button in the middle of the steering wheel and my hands are nice and toasty. Yeah. That, that heat steering wheel is, is amazing. Yeah, and also with the interior, I love the, the iDrive integration now. So it's got Apple CarPlay, it's yeah. got Android Car, and it's got like integration with Spotify, and that makes a huge difference to my driving experience in the car. Oh, the other thing before we go, is what I wanted to mention is the Harman Kardon in this is really good. The Harman Kardon system in the F80 and the F90 is not as good as this to my ears. But I'm stuck behind grandma, it's really frustrating. <laughs> I need to turn around. I don't know if you have you have you put tunes on and blasted it yet? Yeah, yeah. So I've like... been listening, obviously, um, dab and also through my phone, and the sound system is very good. The English trap. It's very good in this. Good bass, nice crisp, crisp treble. Um, I do like the the screens in there, the the dash and and the way they've made the screens is yeah. it's very almost like you know the Mercedes S classes like that big screen they have. But yeah. Obviously split down the middle, but it's very clear, very. Um, almost minimalist way they had they've made it and it's yeah it just displays just the right amount of yeah. information without being too busy but it just gives you yeah. everything that you need it's very good I really yeah. really like it cool so I think we're going to wrap the video up there guys thanks for watching um, if you want to keep more updates on this car just follow the channel we will keep updating you as we own the car more, more I think we're on 1500 miles now we are on yeah yeah 50, 1500 miles. miles so we'll update you a bit more if you guys have got any more questions about the car just put them in the comments below and we'll try and address them next time see you later bye bye thank you so much for watching guys if you like the video please remember to smash that like button and if you haven't already please subscribe to our channel if you want to join the conversation please drop a comment below and we'll try our best to respond to you if you want to watch more of this project you can do so over here if you want to watch what youtube thinks you might like from our other content you can do so over here